In this short video, I'll walk you through the steps to deploy an external Captive Portal for guest users. The Captive Portal will authenticate the users at Guinness MySQL database, and based on the credentials, they will be allocated to a specific group policy in the Meraki dashboard. On top of that, there will be a log message sent to the syslog server. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first step I will have here is to configure the group policies in the Meraki dashboard. And in this case, I will configure two groups, one with the name silver, the other one will be gold. It's really important to keep the names uh, right and consistent because we will need them in the script later. And that's what I need to do for now in the dashboard. Next, I'm ready now to configure the GitHub repo. Um, so the first thing is I will log into my Ubuntu server and I will just update my packages. I'll take a bit. And then after that, um, I will configure or install my pip3 library. So everything here will be based on Python 3. So make sure to have pip3 and Python 3 there. Next step is to configure my SQL server. Um, so I will install the package here quickly uh, on my Ubuntu server. All right, once we would, we're done with the server um, installation, we would just need to change one parameter in the config file. So you see here I have MySQL config file. I'll just go there and change the bind address from localhost to 000. And that to help uh, to allow remote login to the server. After that, we just need to restart the server quickly. And then uh, we will be able to log in to the server. So I'll go sudo MySQL to get a, an admin access to the server. And then from there, I'll configure an admin user with the password, password with capital P. And then I'll just need to flush my privileges. Once we're done with this step, we'll just need to exit. And now I'm ready to get the repo cloned, which the command get clone. And then I'll get the URL of the repo and then after that I will go to folder and uh, install the requirements so here we'll install all the packages that um, part of this code and once we're done with that I will just need to allow read and write access to my folder uh, which is the Meraki captive portal because the session will build a folder uh, when we run the application. All right, now I'm ready to run my app. So I'll go with Python 3 app.py. And from here, you'll be able to see that the application is up and running. I can go to the IP address and port number 5000 to confirm that I can load the captive portal. All right, it's loaded. First thing is I'll go to the admin page. Default username and password is admin admin. And I need to test my database first. So if you go to MySQL Workbench and add the database, so you put the IP address of your database, you put your username, which in this case is admin, and then give it a name as well um, so it can be saved. Okay. Um, when I click, I put my password, which is password capsule P that we configured. And you see here, the database has no tables, just the default one. So when I put the host name or the IP address of my database, the credential, which is admin and password, uh, automatically the script will build a new table for me. So you see the database is reachable and working. And if I refresh my database tables, you see that I have an admin table here now that's been configured for me and already information being saved. Now, if I try to put any credentials for the users to access, of course, I don't have database yet. Uh, but again, automatically, the first time you put the credentials, it created another table called captive. We need to allow edit to the table. Um, so we just need to click on PK and NN. And then after that, I'll be able to put some users in my database. 
So I'll just create two users here, U1 with membership ID 1234 and our group here will be silver. That needs to match what we have in the dashboard. And then user two, same thing, I'll make this one gold. So once I hit apply, we will have those users there. I just need to remove the third line and then we all good to go. So if I go back to my captive portal, put user one, U1 and 1234, uh, it should authenticate me against the database and have the Meraki website loaded. Next thing is to configure the Meraki dashboard again. So I'll go here to my access control under the SSID, click through for my splash page, and I need to enable wall garden. So I did the port forwarding on my public IP to map to 5000. And also I need to allow googleapis.com for the fonts on the splash page. And then after that, I go to the splash page section. And from there, I'll put the external captive portal to be the IP address of my splash page, which is the public IP in this case. And the redirect URL, I'll just put the Meraki website. So after the user authenticates successfully, they will get the Meraki website. Let's test this out. So if I go now to the splash page using the public IP, I will go to the admin page, admin, admin. Then I need to put the API key. And I can also test the syslog server. So you can put your syslog server to get notification when users log in successfully or not. All right, so the API key is working and the database is working. That's great. Now we're ready to test it from my mobile phone. So if I go to the SSID we just created and I try to connect to it. So I have a pre-share key before the splash page. So I'm just putting in my pre-share key. And now I should be triggered with a splash page that we just configured. So here we go. So if I put now the credentials user one and one, two, three, four for my membership, um, I should be granted access. And I'm getting the URL of Meraki. And now if I go to the dashboard, I should be able to see that user in the client page with group policy of silver. All right, if I go now to my Splunk, the syslog server, and change the host to the IP address of my script, uh, you can see here I do have a log for the user that just connected, which is my phone, and it was successful. Thank you very much for watching. Hope that was useful.